Well, hello, and welcome to another edition of Todd Clint's SharePoint Podcast. This is episode 259, recorded live on Monday, August 31st, 2015. Tonight, I'll be your host. I'm Todd Clint, and thank you for welcoming me, welcoming, welcoming me into your your car, your uh, your your lawn mowing, your your home, your den, whatever, wherever you're at and listening to this. I'm just glad to be here. Before we get into the uh, the meats and all meat meat and potatoes and all of this, we were talking about food uh, before this, and I'm all thinking about food. I'm all hungry. Um, I encourage you to go out to sharepoint.rackspace.com and find out about all the great SharePoint things that Rackspace does. We've got many broad, various and sundry SharePoint uh, products for you. You can find out about them at sharepoint.rackspace.com. And while you're out there, go ahead and open up another tab. Doesn't cost you anything extra. It's right there. It's built right into your browser, I promise. Been there since about 1996. Uh, open up another tab and go to www.rackspace.com slash Microsoft and find out about the other fun things that we sell at Rackspace, Azure and System Center and, and Microsoft Bob as a service. We have it all. And you can find out about it at www.rackspace.com slash Microsoft. And while you're out there uh, browsing the web, go ahead and open up another tab and you can go to toddclint.com slash blog and find out about all the crazy things that I'm doing, all my blog posts, all the past uh, podcasts, all that kind of stuff. It's all out there at toddclint.com slash blog. You can also hit me up on Twitter at Todd Clint. You can email me, todd.clint at ragspace.com. I am all over the internet. I'm on Instagram, Todd Clint, though I believe I've never posted a single time because I'm not sure what to do with Instagram. It kind of kind of scares me. I really only bought it so that, or I only signed it up for it so that uh, uh, nobody else would sign up as Todd Clint and then put, you know, horrible pictures there. But uh, that's me, toddclint.com. All right, let me change my slides. Oh, the production notes. So as you all know, there was no podcast last week. I was at SP TechCon in Boston, Massachusetts. We're going to cover that in great depth here in the next part of the show. But uh, there was no podcast. Got the previous podcast, 258, got that out uh, a little late, but I was kind of doing that. I like to space those apart if I'm skipping. No, I'm not going to lie to you folks. I was just lazy and forgot about it. But uh, 258 is out there on my blog and on the RSS feeds and on YouTube and all those great places. So you're not going to want to listen to 259 unless you've listened to 258 first. There's a continuing story arc. You know, it's all the rage in podcasts these days having these story arcs. So I've done that now. Uh, 258 dovetails nicely into 259. So go ahead and download that one. And if you've already listened to it, download it again and uh, and grab it. And Daniel Glenn in the chat room, always trying to r- rouse rabble or m- rake muck. Uh, I can't figure out how to do those. Um, is asking, he would like to know how many people listen to me while they're mowing their lawn. Just this weekend, where I guess it was at SP TechCon, me and one of my buddies were talking about how we listen to podcasts when we mow our lawns and how he is behind on one of the podcasts that we both listen to because he hasn't mowed his lawn since it came out. Whereas I uh, had mowed my lawn, the podcast came out on Thursday, I mowed my lawn on Saturday, and that's when I got to listen to it. So yes, I'm sure people listen to this uh, when they mow their lawns or blow their snow. Uh, Joanne Klein's in the chat room, she's in Saskatchewan, I assume it's just covered in snow uh, 365 days a year. So I assume she's got her snow blow out there, uh, you know, and got the, the things on and got me got me going there. Happens all the time. I know that's one of the ways that I listen to podcasts. So I assume that my podcast is up there in the same uh, pantheon as all the other ones. So it probably gets the same, uh, the same stuff. And now on to topics. Holy cow. This ought, this maybe should have been a double episode of the podcast because there's so much to talk about. And last week I picked a very bad week to not do the podcast. We'll talk about that next and how that always happens. But I do want to talk a little bit about SP TechCon. That's where I was last week. That's why we didn't do a show last week. Normally when I'm at SP TechCon, I do a show, but I was traveling Monday afternoon and Monday evening and the timing wasn't going to work very well. And I had dinner plans with a friend that lives in Boston and Monday night was the only time he could have dinner. So I, I I did that with him. And uh, so I I apologize for that. And then Shane was traveling also, so I couldn't have him fill in. Honestly though. Yeah. I probably dodged a bullet there. Um, 
with, with Shane being busy, he kind of got lucky with that. Um, but anyway, it was at SP TechCon. So I think the big thing that, uh, that everybody at SP TechCon was talking about, the, the bell of the ball, I think, if you asked any, you picked any random SP TechCon attendee, SP TechConner, SP, no, that doesn't work. Anyway, attendee of SP TechCon, um, they will say the thing that they love the most was the Rackspace t-shirts. Now, before I show you the Rackspace t-shirt, it's a pretty cool t-shirt. I'm, I'm going to be honest about that. But when you watch me model it, it's going to look even better. And I don't want you, I don't want there to be an extra uh, pressure on you if you've got one of these shirts and you're going to put it on, you're going you're to see this image and then you're going to put it on and it's not going to look as good on you as it does on me. That that's that's understandable. You you can't hold yourself to those kind of standards, but just know that it's a cool shirt, and all your friend uh, friends will be jealous. Mm-hmm. That's a nice one. Got there. Got a pig on it, which worked out well for me in Iowa. Farm fresh SharePoint at Rackspace. Um, so. Uh, love the shirts. Very nice. A very soft cottony. I got two. I, I cheated. I stuffed one, uh, stuffed one in my pocket when they weren't looking very nice shirt. So I'm, I'm nice. I, I like that. It's got the, the pig and all that continuing the long story tradition of having farm animals on, uh, the rack space and SharePoint 911 shirts. So that was a good thing. The rack space booth was good. We were right on the corner there. We got a lot of traffic, got to run into a lot of folks. Uh, you know, SB tech on, I like to tell folks and it comes up all the time. It's kind of like having a high school reunion every six months. It's all my friends, all the speakers and all the attendees. I, I swear I know half of the attendees at SP TechCon by name, or at least half the ones that come to my sessions because there's, you know, IT Pro and there's Dev and all that uh, that stuff. But I do think that uh, that I, I just, I mean, it, it's like a, it's like a, a big uh, – a big family reunion. So one of the people uh, that I wanted to call out, actually two people, um, got a text, a fran almost a frantic text on Tuesday night from a friend of mine, uh, Stacy. And Stacy said, hey, there's uh, someone here looking for you. Are you at the booth? And I'm like, nah, we're, you know, the bunch of us are out for supper and we're all ways away. But uh, does, you know, somebody needs something, what's going on? And she's like, ah, no, don't worry about it. Uh, they'll catch you tomorrow. And so I'm like, all right, cool. That's, uh, that's good. Um, and so I, I went back Wednesday because I flew home Thursday. And lo and behold, Stacy walks up with another familiar face, one of the many familiar faces that I saw at SB Tech on. And this was Heidi. And Heidi is a friend. Uh, she's gone to a couple sessions. I recognized her from a SharePoint conference in Las Vegas. I think the last one, I forget which one it is now. Uh, but she, uh, she and I hung out a little bit at the racetrack when you guys were there talking to her and she had a different coworker with her this time. She had John with her this time. She had a different coworker with her last time, but talking to them was uh, more exciting than, than taking the car around the track. I don't know if any of you guys did that. We were at the Las Vegas speedway speedway. And one of the things they had there were cars on the track and you could get in, they would drive you around the track. I'm not lying. When I tell you that the car that I took from the hotel to the airport the next morning went faster than the car um, that I took around the track on that speedway, it was It's like, uh, gosh, kids were going 85. Have you ever gone 85 before? I'm like, oh, my God, it's like my grandpa's driving. Um, but anyway, so talking with Heidi and, and her coworker at the last SharePoint conference was, was, was a good time. And so as soon as she came around the corner, I recognized her. In the chat room, I've got a picture of the the picture of the three of us. It was uh, it was a good time. So I, I kind of felt so I, I I see all these people and it's the same you know a lot of the same people um, they go to SP TechCon, especially the one in Boston because it's local for a lot of folks and it's always there. And I kind of felt like Paul Simon in a, <laughs> in a, a Saturday Night Live skit about I don't know geez thirty years ago where uh, Paul Simon standing in line for a movie. And people keep coming up and they're like, Hey, Paul, do you remember me? And he's like, Oh yeah, you're the, you're the bass player on the first album. You, you brought your mom into the studio. Good to see you. And, and then someone else is like, Hey, Paul, do you remember me? I was, I was at that one concert at Central Park. He's like, Oh yeah, you were sitting on a plaid blanket. Oh, I actually remember you. You know, you, you've changed your hair. And then uh, Art Garfunkel walks up and says, Oh, the movie's great. I think you're going to love it. And Paul Simon's like, who are you again? Anyway, very funny skit, but that's kind of how I felt uh, at SP Tech. Kind of just felt like I knew all these people. I'm like, oh, how's that farm going? Oh, you got a new job. It's a it's a great show. If you haven't gone to an SP Tech Con, it's uh, it's a good time. And so I got to I got to talk to Heidi a little bit. Now I felt bad. So I live in Iowa. Heidi lives in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 
And last week we got uh, torrential rains here and up north, which Sioux Falls is north of us, um, got even worse rain. When I got home, I saw the flooding. So I hope, uh, hope her and John can swim. I hope they've got, uh, got the water wings. I've got myself a nice pair of SpongeBob water wings that I always wear when the flooding happens here. But I see she's in the chat room tonight. So clearly she wasn't killed in the floods. That's always a good sign. But just constantly ran into people like that at SB Tech on it. Always, uh, always, always a good time. Just love it. It's just good atmosphere. So people got the, the Rackspace t-shirts. There was a, a few other good pieces of swag there. I did a couple of sessions. I did an upgrade to SharePoint 2013 session, but since SharePoint 2016 had come out the day before, two days before at that point, that session was on Wednesday. I did, um, I add in some 2016 stuff. Haven't done a lot of SharePoint 2016 upgrades because again, it just came out on Monday and you know, that's all stunt kind of getting figured out. But we did talk a little bit about that. Talked about what happens if you're on SharePoint 2010 now, should you go ahead and upgrade to SharePoint uh, 2013 or should you upgrade to SharePoint 2016? And that was a discussion that we had. And what I told folks at that session was, you know, SharePoint 2016, the first preview came out Monday. They've said that, you know, it's not going to RTM until uh, first quarter of next year, which I assume means midnight, March 31st or 1159, I guess, March 31st, just the very end of the third quarter. And then you're going to get it and you're going to test it because you're not going to trust any of the tests you made on the preview builds. And that's going to take you a couple of months and then you're going to make a plan. And I mean, we're talking before you would actually move any content into SharePoint 2016, it's at least a year out. So if you're on SharePoint 2010 now and you've already started planning for SharePoint 2013, my recommendation for them was to just go ahead and keep on with that. And that gets you on 2013, then you're not two versions behind and then you don't have to rush out to SharePoint 2016 um, uh, when, when that comes out. So that was my recommendation for them. But another thing that I added to the SharePoint 2013 talk was upgrading to the cloud, upgrading to SharePoint online. And that's really not an upgrade. It's kind of a migration, though those terms get kind of fuzzy. But with the hybrid things that you can do in 2013, where you can move, you know, your OneDrive and, and some of those things into the cloud, and you can bolt your SharePoint 2013 cloud into your SharePoint Online tenant. And with SharePoint 2016 offering that as well, maybe it makes sense to start moving some of those things, you know, get to 2013, get move some of those things to SharePoint Online, move them into the cloud, and then when your SharePoint 2016 farm becomes production, bolt it to that same tenant and all that stuff will still be there. Uh, so there's a lot of considerations. We had some really good talks. I got through about almost half my slides for the upgrade session. I felt bad about that, but I felt like the discussion was good. The room was, was pretty full and a lot of people uh, had a lot of questions. So I, I didn't feel too bad about skipping the rest of the slides. Uh, Merrill Sanders, Tech Rev Merrill, is saying is asking. So we shouldn't be migrating all of our production data to 2016 next week? Um, not next week. Uh, you know, you got the holiday weekend coming up, so I would wait till maybe the week after. Oh, that's a short week, so maybe the week after that would be a good week to do it, but not right away. You got that? They get that holiday weekend, and you don't want to be working over your holiday weekends. Labor Day for those of us in the states, and uh, you don't, you don't want. It. But after that, then move your production stuff to SharePoint uh, 2016. I kid, don't move your stuff to SharePoint 2016. Um, so I did that session, and then I also did uh, a session on Tuesday. I did a session on using PowerShell with SharePoint online. This is a session that I've done a couple of times. I kind of did a rehearsal for it a couple of weeks ago with the Mississippi PowerShell SharePoint, <laughs> the Mississippi PowerShell user group. In my head, the words SharePoint always precede uh, user group. But when I did, the um, the presentation for the PowerShell user group a couple of weeks ago was that same presentation, uh, a little different, but uh, uh, that same presentation. And that's been a good one. I've done that three or four times now. And it's kind of the next evolution of SharePoint is, you know, SharePoint online and all that. And when you've got your PowerShell skills, I've been talking about how great PowerShell is with SharePoint for about the last five years. And now we've got some more options. Now we've got SharePoint on-prem with PowerShell and now we've got SharePoint online with PowerShell. There's not a lot to do with it yet, but it was a good, I mean, so I had a 75 minute session. It was a good uh, solid hour discussion that we had with people in the audience. I wasn't necessarily planning on doing any demos. And then I tried to do some demos and couldn't get, uh, couldn't get logged in. The demo gods were frowning fiercely upon me but it was a good one and every time i do that presentation 
I've been doing it for a year or so now. Uh, it's it gets better every time, and, I, and not just my presentation. That's gonna that's gonna stink no matter what. But the content I'm presenting on every time I do that session, there's a couple of more commandlets in the SharePoint Online uh, management pack. A couple more commandlets in Azure. A couple more things that you can do, um, you know, outside with CSOM things like that. So it's it's a thing. It's it's coming. It's gonna be a thing. It, it's SharePoint in the cloud. I mocked heartily when it first came out. PowerShell with SharePoint in the cloud. I mocked that heartily when it first came out. It's it's a thing now. It's a thing to be taken seriously. And especially once you start doing the hybrid uh, scenarios, working your users out into the cloud and bolting things up, reproducing all that with PowerShell is the, the best way to go. So it's a good session. I think the Mississippi PowerShell user group has it on their site and I'll probably be doing some stuff with it. Or you can, you know, come see me at a conference somewhere and I'll probably uh, be putting it on. One of the things that uh, the SP TechCon coordinators, the people that ran it, uh, Dave Rubenstein specifically was worried about was uh, how I would do without Shane there, or as he uh, adorably referred to it, the loss of Shane. That's just adorable. Uh, and I told, so when we got there, Dave's like, hey, are you going to be able to do okay without without Shane here? And I'm like, that guy's just been a weight hanging around my neck. Now I can finally soar like an eagle. And I think things went very, very well. I didn't have to worry about him interrupting me and stealing all my jokes and all my stories. Uh, I write all the material. One thing you guys uh, didn't know about our sessions is I wrote all of the factual material, all of the content, all of the jokes, the funny ones and uh, the unfunny ones. I dressed Shane in the morning, ironed his clothes. And uh, so now I have all that spare time now that I'm not uh, not taking care of him. So it was really great. But I talked to Dave today about the next SB Tech Con. We'll talk about that in, here in a minute. And he said he looked through the evaluations and it seems like I was able to, to pull it through without uh, without Shane there. I was able to, to muster a good... Uh, good show. So I, I appreciate all the, all the fine folks that left uh, comment cards behind. Um, but yeah, so I, we were able to deal with the loss of, of Shane. That was, uh, I know we were all worried about that, but somehow I was able to, able to pull through. But I did want to mention the next SP TechCon. You can go to sptechcon.com. The next one is in Austin, Texas. Kind of a fun little town. I'd never been there uh, until the previous SP TechCon had a lot of fun. But the next SP TechCon will be in Austin, Texas, and it will be February 21st through the 24th. And I've already submitted sessions. This might be the first time in like five years that I have submitted session abstracts on time to SP TechCon. It was completely by accident. I thought they were due Friday. And I was uh, just, you know, doing the thing where I make them wait, make them sweat it a little bit, make them think I'm not coming. And then I come in a couple of days later and then they're not mad at me because they were afraid. I turned them in today and turned out they were due today. So I wasn't nearly as clever as I thought I was, but I submitted two or three sessions and it looks like, uh, looks like I might get to speak there again. So I'm kind of stoked about that. So hopefully I'll see the gang again in Austin, February 21st through the 24th. But overall, I kind of want to uh, wrap things up about SP TechCon. Overall, great conference. As always, those guys put on a good show. The location is great there in Boston. There's so much to see and so many great things. Um, to walk to and all that. Uh, I just just had a blast and I look forward to going back there next year. Um, there is, so we were at the Sheraton this time uh, and I, I was talking to Shane today and Shane and I, boy, I don't know, three or four years ago, probably the last time it was at that Sheraton because it moves around a little bit. There's a McCormick and Schmidt Steakhouse, uh, right or Capitol Grill, Capitol Grill Steakhouse right around the corner from there. And he and I were there with a couple of our friends getting steaks uh, a few years ago. And um, we were having a good time and having appetizers and all that kind of stuff. And our food came and, you know, you wait for everybody to, to get their food. And then I always wait for whoever the highest ranking person at the table is to eat. And it just happened that Shane and I bit into our steaks at the same time. And we both just kind of melted in our seats. And I think that's been the best steak I've ever had in my life. Uh, I would be lying if I said it's the only time I've ever licked my plate at a restaurant. Uh, but I don't do it very often. Once, twice a month tops. Uh, but that steak was so good. So we we're, <laughs> were going to, to supper one night and the cab took off and drove past that. And that memory of... Uh, uh, came flooding back to me and then we drove someplace else <laughs> at supper and I was just all kind of, uh, kind of sad, but next time Capitol grill, you and me, we're, uh, we're going to hook up. Um, all right. So SP TechCon was great. Loved, uh, loved all that. 
The other big news this week, besides SP TechCon and how great all that was, was a little thing called uh, SharePoint 2016 IT Preview. And that came out on Monday. So it came out uh, seven days ago on the 24th. And it's got all kinds of great stuff in it. And one thing that Microsoft seems to be doing is putting out these previews and things like this while I'm traveling. So I was traveling all day Monday. They put this preview out. When the SharePoint 2013 preview came out, I was traveling to San Antonio all day for some uh, SharePoint stuff or some Rackspace stuff. So I just know every time that I get into a, you know, anytime one of these dates is supposed to come and I get into an airplane, that's when this is going to drop. But um, so had had a chance to play with that a little bit over the last week, and it's looking pretty good. Now, this is an IT preview, and they've been very clear that they have not shown all the cards in their hand yet. There's a bunch of new things coming, a bunch of functionality that's not there that, that will be there eventually. But it's for the IT folks, for, for, for us, my people, you and I, to kind of get a handle on what the installation looks like and how you scale the thing and some of the big architecture changes. And that's what it's out, uh, out doing right now. So there, I've got a blog post coming and it will cover some of the, the main things. One of the things, if you're an IT pro and you're playing with this, you're going to want to uh, look at MinRoll and MinRoll is a way to define, give a hard definition to the services that any one server in a farm does. And that way, you know, you get all the, all the right things turned on that you want turned on. And then SharePoint, since it knows exactly what that server is going to do, it can monitor those services. And if a service instance crashes or something like that, or somebody goes in and changes something, um, it can fix it, which is pretty cool. The other cool thing about MinRoll is if you, so there are five MinRolls, and I don't remember what they are now, custom, single server, search, application, web, there's another one in there. Uh, I think there's six of them total. But if you pick any of them besides custom, when you, so this is a, a configuration option, not an installation option. So all the bits get laid down. It's when you join the machine to the farm that you have to fool with this. And uh, if you use any min roll besides custom, then once the server is up and going, you can go in and change it. And you, so if you have a, a machine defined as an application server, and then you decide it's going to be dedicated to search, you can go in and change its min roll to search. And behind the scenes, SharePoint will jiggle everything for you. And uh, and then you'll be able to uh, have that search server and have it acting like a search server. If you're if you do a custom min roll, you don't have the option to change it afterwards. But uh, not a big deal. But again, it's a configuration thing, not an installation thing. So you can uh, play with that a little bit without uh, without hurting anything. Um, so what? Uh, and here's one that tripped me up a little bit. When you install the SharePoint 2016, so you go to the link. There's a link in my blog post about it. When you install that, you need a key, a, a demo key for it. It's under the uh, installation instructions section. You got to expand it to see the key. It's not. Uh, uh, very obvious, but that you'll need that when you get that installed. And okay, so that was one thing that slowed me down a little bit when I was uh, getting everything going. Um, okay, so minerals, another one, there's a whole lot of hybrid things that uh, are in there, though a lot of those are existing already in SharePoint 2013, if you've got one of the latest CUs. So things like search, it's got the cloud uh, hybrid deal in it. And it's got the OneDrive and all that in it. When you're creating your search service app, if you want to do hybrid search, the cloud search, there's a couple of things you can do. If you create your search service app with PowerShell, when you create the new uh, SP Enterprise Search service application, there is a cloud dash C tab, I forget what it is, cloud ready or whatever parameter, you can slip true to that and it will make it cloud ready. Also, it's a uh, property of your service app and you can change it later on to jiggle it and make it uh, make it a cloud service app. But that that's in there now. The public endpoint for that's not out yet, so you really can't do anything with it yet, but uh, that'll be out coming out soon. One of the new things um, that uh, that's in there now is adding list uh, large list support has gotten uh, gotten much better and one of the things that they've done for that they they're, they're constantly changing um, how things are going in SharePoint, you know, how lot lists are handled, doing cool things like making sure that things are done in batches instead of, you know, tens of thousands at a time to not lock databases, things like that. But one of the things that they've added is this ability for SharePoint to assign an index to a list. So adding an index to a list is something we've been able to do for a while. 
and that gives SharePoint an idea uh, what to sort on, what columns we're doing things with, and it lets it handle large lists better. But we have to define that. We have to put that in there. And that's probably something that we don't all do very often. And so SharePoint 2016 has this option now for doing this automatically for you. So there's a setting in each list in each library that says uh, automatically create indices. And if you leave that on, that's the default setting. If you leave that on, then it will create the indices for you. And that speeds up list lookups. It speeds up how it handles um, uh, large list views um, and, and all that. So that's, um, that's, that's been a good feature. I encourage you to play with that. Having that out there, you know, and allowing large lists is a good thing, but it also, you know, cuts both ways. So now your document libraries are going to get larger, things like that. So you need to be able to handle that on the back end to make sure that, uh, that you've got that in place. Now, one of the things that you can do to test this new thing is to create a list or a library with a few thousand uh, items in it and then just see how it all handles, see if you, if you get those warnings and things like that. So I've got a blog post from way back in the SharePoint 2010 days that lets you create lots and lots of list items. And so the, the script as it is in the blog post creates 5,001, but there's no reason it couldn't create 10,000, 20,000, whatever. Wherever you're at with your testing with SharePoint 2016, this script will create the list items for you. And it creates them all with the title, uh, Todd is cool, which I thought was kind of funny at the time. But then turns out that ended up uh, coming back um, later. So this doesn't happen to me very often because I'm a horrible blogger and the stuff that I write is no good. But somebody uh, copied some of my blog posts. And one of them that they copied was this one right here. And the way that somebody found it was they were searching for this and they were, they, they couldn't remember which, uh, which blog post it was or what the name of it was, but they remembered the whole Todd is cool bit in the, in the title. So they went out to Google or Bing or whatever and did a search for like SharePoint PowerShell Todd is cool, expecting my blog to show up. And my blog did show up, but so did this other guy's blog. And normally I'm not a big fan of people stealing my intellectual property. It doesn't come up that often, but um, I'm not, not a huge fan of it. So the, the person that found this sent me a, an email and let me know that that was going on. And I went, went there and sure enough, this guy had just wholesale copied my blog post, just copy, paste, highlight, copy, paste, didn't even try to change anything. But what I realized was this guy, and we'll call him Fred. I don't know what his real name was. I've long since forgotten. But Fred has a blog about SharePoint. And on Fred's blog, he has a blog post on how to create 5,000 list items that say Todd is cool. And I'm like, you know, Fred, I'm okay with that. Had you stolen some other blog post that wasn't nearly as funny, I might be a little more upset. But if you want your readers to know how to create a list that says 5,000 at one time, Todd is cool, I will allow it. Uh, so that's uh, that blog post is always uh, stuck out with me. I've always enjoyed that one. Um, so... There, so I, I've got a, a, a bunch more SharePoint 2016 blog posts ahead of time. And, or, uh, oh, sorry, the, the videos, my internet connection popped out here during the middle of this. So I'm kind of watching everything come back up uh, online. So I've got some more SharePoint 2016 blog posts in the hopper. I've been playing with it, trying to figure out what pieces of it I want to write about and things like that. But I have created a short URL for it. So all of my blog posts that are tagged with the SharePoint 2016 uh, topic will show up if you go to toddclint.com slash SharePoint 2016. And you can go there now and you can see I've got a couple of them there already. So as I add more blog posts, if those are the ones you're interested in, you can go to that one. That's toddclint.com slash SharePoint 2016. Now, a couple things about that. This is a preview. And that means we're all kind of learning it together. I'm probably going to blog some things that a year from now will be, oh my God, I can't believe I suggested they do that. Uh, but that's, that's the way it goes as a preview software and it's early in the preview cycle. So, so give me some, uh, some leeway on that. The other thing is it's preview software and it's just going to have some problems. Um, and so you got to be, uh, be understanding of that too. But I will be getting more stuff out there. I've got a blog post sitting in another window right here, just waiting for me to finish it up and publish it out there for you. Um, but all good stuff. If you've got SharePoint 2016 IT topics that you want me to take a look at, you can uh, hit me up on Twitter at Todd Clint or send me an email, todd.clint at rackspace.com. And if I've got uh, got some time and got some interest in it, I might look at it. I might turn it into a blog post or a podcast topic or something like that. 
But rest assured, you will be hearing more about SharePoint 2016 on this podcast. Okay, we're um, uh, coming up on a half an hour here. Try to keep this half an hour. But uh, I got some other couple of cool things I want to talk about. One of them is Windows 10. So as you guys know, I've been pretty excited about Windows 10 for a while. Today was a milestone for me for Windows 10. And this may not show be such a big deal to you guys, but this here is my Dell Venue 8 Pro, my trusty Dell Venue 8 Pro. And this thing has been my favorite little tablet. And Lord knows it's got lots of competition here at this house. But this has been my favorite uh, little tablet for as long as I've had it for a couple of years now. And today, today I finally decided that it could get Windows 10. So today my Dell Venue 8 Pro uh, got Windows 10. And that's how you know that Windows 10 has arrived in my house because I put it on my Dell Venue 8 Pro. And um, so it went pretty well. There's a couple of things I need to look at. The, um, the Dell drivers, network drivers and things like that have been kind of kooky. And so I've uh, had some trouble with that. The other thing that I have not grown to appreciate yet is the fact that Windows 10 has a hard limit on column widths. Columns can only be three tiles wide. And when I had Windows 8 on this, I had tiles all the way across and now I can only have them three wide. And I hate that a lot, but all the other cool things in Windows 10 have encouraged me to go ahead and update it. So I've got this, I've got it in tablet mode now and it's uh, it's working pretty well. But one thing that I did want to talk about is one of the things that we enjoyed in the Windows 10 preview was the fast ring. And that was the ability to get those bleeding edge bits as soon as Microsoft eked them out. And uh, you can still do that in the RTM now. You had to go reset it, they reset it at RTM. But if you wanna get the fast ring updates for Windows 10 RTM, you can still do that. So go, go to your start screen, go wherever, and go to the Windows update settings. And there's going to be an advanced button. Click that. That's going to take you to another screen. And then look on that screen. And there's going to be a thing that says get insider builds. And when you click that, it's going to ask you which builds you want, slow or fast. And uh, I picked fast because that's just, I'm a, a low drag, high speed kind of guy. Fast is just, if you could pick one word that describes me to a T, fast would be it. And uh, so I picked the fast one. I've got a bunch of my tablets on the fast ring right now. That will take some time. You'll have to wait, you know, check, check a couple cycles with that, but then you'll get all the, the things. And there was a fast ring update here uh, a week or so ago. So uh, if you want to do that, great. If you want something sturdy and stable, you just get, get your regular Windows updates. So Merrill brings up an, uh, a thing here. One of the funnest accessories that I've got for this Dell Venue 8 Pro is a pluggable dock. And pluggable is a company and they made a dock specifically for the Dell Venue 8 Pro because it's got this crazy USB OTG uh, port on it here that is both the USB guest connection and the charging connection. And um, so it's tough to hook both up. It can be done, and there's kind of some, some weird cable things, and I've got some blog posts on that. But um, but otherwise, that, 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 that uh, pluggable dock, pluggable 8, I think it's called, is a great uh, a great little dock. But as uh, Merrill has noticed, and I, I knew about this ahead of time, there's a bug with the pluggable dock in Windows 10. The audio doesn't work. So you have a couple of workarounds. Well, you, let's say you have three options. Uh, number one, just pretend you're deaf and don't want audio from your tablet. Uh, number two, you can uh, reload the driver every time. <laughs> so there's a bug with the driver and uh, you can reload the driver every time the thing loads up and that is a whole lot of fun. Or your third option is to plug your speakers into something else. So you can um, plug your speakers into the tablet itself, I think, or another thing they suggested was plugging it into a USB audio device. Used to have one of those in here somewhere. No, oh, I don't anymore. Merrill, I was not suggesting or not expecting this question. But you can get the little USB audio dongle things, and apparently that works as well. You can plug that into the dock and those work. But for now, the pluggable audio on the pluggable dock does not work with the Dell Venue 8 Pro. They know about it, they're working on it. If you go to their site, there's some stuff about it. So I'm sure they'll uh, they'll get it fixed. But so far, so good on all of this stuff. And I'm seeing a bunch of people in the chat room talking about how those, they have those pluggable docks. So I'm, I'm glad to see that. And I think all the pluggable docks have that issue, actually. So I have another pluggable dock that's not for the Dell Venue 8 Pro. I think it's got the same issue. 
The last thing that I wanted to talk about uh, is something very personal to me as a nerd and as a guy that uh, um, likes to read and all that. So <clears throat> a year ago, I don't remember exactly when it was. I've not been doing very well this year, but the last 2012, 2013, I read a ton of books and I need to get back into that. I've just been, been slacking. But um, so sometime last year, I think it was on another forum that I frequent, that's not a technology forum. Some people were talking about a book called the Martian. And the story of the writing of The Martian is almost as good as the book The Martian itself. Uh, the guy that wrote The Martian, a guy named Andy Weir, is a computer nerd like us. He's an IT guy. I think he's a programmer or something like that, but also can write. And he had written a book and had shopped it to a bunch of the big publishing houses, and they told him to go fly a kite. Nobody would publish his book. And he was felt very sad, very downtrodden, beaten, dejected, but he had another book in him. He had this great book that he was thinking about called The Martian. So he got himself a WordPress a blog and he started blogging the chapters of this book as he wrote it, which is very reminiscent of like how, you know, Dickens wrote books and, and Twain and all those kind of things. Um, and so he started writing this book on his blog and the book was great. Apparently I didn't read it on his blog, but, um, <clears throat> He continued writing this book on his blog and he got it finished. And the people that were reading his blog were like, Andy, weird. This is the best book ever written. This is, this is like war and peace, but better. This is the best thing ever. But it is a gigantic pain in my tuchus to read it on your blog. Oh my God, you need to make this an ebook. And so he said, okay, great. I, I want people to love my book. I want people to, to read it. So he went out and went to Amazon and did like I did. He self-published a book. Couldn't give it away for free. He had been giving it away for free in his blog. Couldn't give it away for free because Amazon takes 30% cut. And they're good at math at Amazon and they realize that 30% of nothing is nothing. So they make you charge at least 99 cents for your books. So he charged 99 cents, the very least that he could for that book and said, okay, quit whining. Here it is. It's out on Amazon. And it blew up, sold roughly 14 squillion copies. I don't know. Huge success. The book is just an amazing book just a great book. And so now he's worldwide famous and, um, and got a, got a big book deal out of the, out of it. So now you can't get it for free on his blog anymore. And I think this weekend it was on sale at Amazon for two bucks, but I think it's back up to six or something like that. But I got it right. So, so the story broke and it was like days before it was going to get yanked everywhere. And I got it for a dollar, uh, which was, you know, what he had originally sold it for. So I, I, I've read a bunch of self-published things, didn't have very high hopes. Oh my God, the book is hysterical. It is just absolutely hysterical, incredibly well-written. If I could write one one hundredth as well as this guy does, that's all I'd do. The premise of the book is there, you know, we're a few years in the future. I forget what, uh, what year it, it takes place in, but we have sent our first colony to Mars and there's six or seven people on Mars. Huge storm comes up, they evacuate Mars. One of the astronauts gets, gets killed during the evacuation of Mars and they get up to the orbiter and they realize he's not dead. The rumors of his death have been horribly exaggerated. And so the whole book is how the astronaut, Mark Watney, figures out how to get off of Mars. He doesn't want to be the first person to die on Mars. And it is, um, it is absolutely an amazing book. And it, it, it's so it's just so funny and it's so sarcastic and it's the the, the technology is great. I saw an interview with the uh, the writer and he said there was only two scenes in the book that were not technically or scientifically accurate. And he was aware of both of them, but they played a very pivotal part in the story. And I'm not going to give well, I'm not going to give give uh, give any of it away. Not that it would be big spoilers, but I want you to to, to understand this book. And, and, and enjoy it as much as I do. Um, so, but a very well-written book. The story is solid. The science is solid. It's, it's really entertaining. And so now you, you think this guy has made it. He's got this huge book. Oh no, there's one mountain left for him to climb. It's being made into a movie and not just any kind of movie, not some little indie uh, house movie or anything like that. A big movie. Ridley Scott is uh, directing it. 
and Matt Damon is playing the the main role. And I'm like a kid at Christmas. They've been uh, releasing trailers for this thing. And I just, every time a trailer, I just get all excited and I make everybody I know watch the trailer. And it is just hysterical. I think Matt Damon is perfect for the, the role. He just embodies that, that whole thing. Um, so it's just a great book. I can't, can't speak enough about it. So I encourage you to go out and buy The Martian. Support Andy Weir. He's a, he's a good guy. And uh, so one of the great uh, things I saw in an interview with him, talking about the movie being made and the interviewer said, so are you on set all the time? And uh, you know, you're telling him how it should be. And he's like, are you kidding me? It's, it's Matt Damon and Ridley Scott. These guys have been making movies their whole lives. I have nothing to offer them. He's like, so I went out on set. I met everybody, shook their hand, got some pictures taken. And, uh, and, and, and that's it. He's like, I have one job in all of this, just sit home and cash checks. <laughs> and I just thought it was, uh, it was so awesome. Um, so Jack in the chat room is bringing up star Wars, star Wars episode seven comes out December 21st, the force awakens. I'm super excited about that. Star Wars is a big type of my upbringing and, um, uh, I am as excited about The Martian as I am about Episode Seven. It uh, it is just that good of a book, just that good of a story. It, it's really good. So go out. They've got a YouTube channel. Go out and watch the uh, the previews. One thing I will warn you about: the language in the book is a little bit harsh. There is an f bomb or two that has snuck its way into the narrative. But um, I was in the military for nine years. The the harsh language doesn't bother me. And the guy's trapped on Mars. He's going to drop an F-bomb here and there. Uh, that's uh, that's how that goes. But anyway, I'm, I'm super excited about that. Uh, a second preview came out last week, and I'm all uh, all excited about it. Jack's asking if I'm more excited about The Martian or 2016. The Martian, <laughs> absolutely. So anyway, enough about that. I've uh, bored you all to tears uh, with that. Um... <laughs> So shameless self-promotion, this list has been getting shorter and shorter. It's crazy, but we're, we're coming close to the end of the year. We're coming close to 2015, the end of 2015. And so the number of uh, conferences are starting to wear down. But I do have a couple here in a couple of weeks, three weeks. I'm going to be at SharePoint Alusa in Branson, Missouri. You guys need to go out to SharePoint Alusa and see what's going on there. And Mark Rackley, this is Mark Rackley's uh, baby out there at SharePointAlusa.org. And he has put out a video today on YouTube to let you get uh, uh, get excited about SharePoint and lose a couple of great things about this YouTube video. Number one, uh, my picture's in it. So that's awesome. I do appreciate that. And number two, one of the bands that's playing does the music for the video. And it's pretty good. Uh, I've never been there before. And it's going to be a good time. So it's a it's a two day SharePoint conference. It's a Friday and a Saturday, and there's music and partying, and it's going to be great. And you get in for like fifty bucks, and I think if you put in like the the code YouTube, you get in for like twenty five. I don't know. Um, so um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I've I've noticed that on the schedule, he doesn't really have the sessions down that I submitted. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing at the conference. I'm just happy to be there. I don't know if he's going to be pouring coffee or cleaning bathrooms or something like that. Um, but I'm just happy to be a part of that. So SharePointAlusa.org, check that out, sign up for it if you haven't signed up for it already. And then the other big event that I've signed up for this year is Dev Intersections. That's devintersection.com. That's October 26th through the 29th in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada at the MGM Grand. I'm not sure what we'll be talking about there either, but again, I'm just happy to be there. Oh, and SharePoint Alusa is the 18th and 19th of September. Not sure if I'm... Uh... Anyway, uh, good stuff there. Uh, so hopefully you see y'all. Got some people in the chat room that I saw at SP Tech Con. I'm a friendly guy. Tell them in the chat room what a friendly guy I am. Uh, you come up and, and talk to me in person. I just uh, give you big hugs and couldn't be nicer in person. I know with this gruff exterior and, you know, it seems like I would be unapproachable, but honest, I'm just uh, just an average average guy. Um, so anyway, thanks for everybody. I will see you in a week. We'll talk more about SharePoint 2016, and there will be a quiz about the Martian next week. So do your homework. See you next week. Bye.